What's good, YouTube? It's your boy, Only One KDB, and I'm back with another video. On today's video, bro, we got the teenager hip hop assassin with nine plus kills. Now, this is the story of Marlo Mike, bro. If y'all don't know who Marlo Mike is, bro, he was a menace in these streets. He, I think that he from uh, Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Straight menace. I ain't finna do too much talking. We finna uh, get to the video, bro. If y'all new to the channel, make sure y'all like, share, and subscribe. Turn on that post notification bell so you get notified when I drop whenever hit. We thought I was finna say bang it, boy. Now, I hope y'all boys uh, been copping clothes. Because it's getting nice outside. I hope y'all been copping clothes for the hoes. <laughs> but yeah, bro, let's get to it, bro. Yo, Boosie, who's next? Were the words tattooed under his chest with a depiction of an AK-47. He received this tattoo two weeks after the murder of Terry Boyd, alluding to the idea that it was Boosie who gave the call to kill Terry. But then again, Boosie was good friends with Terry. He even had a child with his mother. So was he involved or not? Boosie, as we know, is the iconic Southern hip hop act. He started his career with the stage name Lil Boosie and then would later change it to Boosie Badass, commonly known just now as Why did Boosie. he change his name? But this video is not really about him. No. This video is about Lil Boosie's hitman, Marlo Mike, and the Yo, things he Marlo. allegedly did on Boosie's command. Just a couple of lyrics that Boosie rap mentioning this young man were as follows Ain't no love in my body, Marlo Mike in the backseat begging for a body. Yo, Marlo, he driving Monte Carlo. Dow Gray, I want him dead today. Here go to Kate. Mm -hmm. To give you a little pretext, by the age of he 15, can't hit his Marlo had pray, already but... taken the lives of allegedly nine people. That's right. This man wasn't to be taken lightly. Born in the hood of Baton Rouge, Marlo pretty much spent his childhood living around crime. Before a teenager, he had witnessed a murder happen right in front of him. Charleston White had recently come out and said that at the age of five years old, Marlo witnessed his own mother being killed. An incident that most Dang. definitely had a long-term effect know that. on his psyche. Because of where he grew up and the things he saw in his childhood, Marlo would become a menace to society. He got expelled from middle school for carrying a gun while walking around campus. And although he had anger issues as a kid, he wasn't too violent, at least not in the traditional sense. His mother, however, was always concerned about her son because he'd often mentioned that he could hear voices in his head possible schizophrenia, which is a bit odd and conflicting on the accounts that Charleston White made that he had witnessed his mother die, but this could have been a guardian. We're not entirely sure in that capacity. But I mean, your adolescent Bro, son say that he could hear- I didn't know that uh, he witnessed his mother die. I thought it was some somebody he knew or something. I didn't know it was his mother, bruh. That's crazy, bruh. Damn, bruh. But let's continue. Voices in his head isn't really anything to sleep over. Maybe he's finally become conscious of his thoughts. No idea. But it might have just been the mother's intuition that she could feel something wasn't right. And of course, things began to escalate rather quickly during his preteen and teenage years. During this time, Lil Boosie's raps had a strong influence on him, as it did a lot of people in the South. In fact, when Marlo was 14 years of age, he started living with Boosie in the same house. There's even a photo of Marlo hugging Boosie's daughter. In his words, Boosie stated that he saw Marlo as his own son. Then he became Marlo. his legal guardian. Let me stop talking. But for what it's worth, Marlo quickly developed a strong reputation as Lil Boosie's muscle. A stone cold killer. A man who thinks nothing of taking someone's life. On September 22, Menace. 2009, Lil Boosie once again pled guilty to legal possession of marijuana. This was the third time. And so the court ended up sentencing him to what have most likely just been one year. Not bad for but pardon, bro, he... but imagine you beefing with Marlo, Mike, bro, back in the day, bro. I wouldn't dare beef with no nigga like that. He don't give a damn about nothing. He'll hit you on camera and everything. He don't give a damn. But yeah, that nigga was a menace, bro. I ain't lying, bro. That nigga was... That nigga was out his mind, for real. Violated his post-plea terms. His prison time doubled. Going back to Marlo, Mike... He never, not once, shied away from crimes. Everything from property damage, dissing and resisting arrest, possession of illegal and dangerous substances, robberies, guns, you name it, he did the wrong thing as naturally as, and involuntarily as he breathed. And at the core of these crimes was his obsession with drugs. He would get money by selling drugs. And he was doing money goddamn to buy weed, drugs too. Weed, and this unhealthy cycle continued. Some could say he was probably self-medicating for a mental issue that never got diagnosed. 
at one instance, he pretty much killed someone for money, about $2,800, so that he could then use the money to buy some drugs. This then brings us to what happened on October 21st, 2009, the night when Terry Boyd was murdered. Six bullets were fired from outside the window. By the time the police arrived, the man was already dead. Terry had been living there ever since he completed his five-year stint at the Winfield Correctional Facility, which ended a month prior. And when things were investigated, marijuana, morphine, and codeine were found in Terry's bloodstream. That's right, yeah. Terry wasn't a stranger to the underground world either. Someone wanted him dead. The one who was charged for this murder, though, was Lil Boosie. It was reported that he gave $2,800 to Marlo Mike in order to kill someone. And oh, that my God. Terry Boosie wrong than a motherfucker, bro. Marlo Mike. You mean to tell me he was, lo he was lowballing this, this man, bro? Yeah, he gave him $2,800, bro. Man, that ain't... I mean, I guess that's something to a kid. But, like, bro... 20, that's that's crazy, bro. But let's continue, bro. Two Allegedly, other individuals we're going to named say. Michael Judson and Adrian Pittman were also directly involved in the shooting. Side note here, for the sake of convenience, we'll be referring to Michael Judson as Ghost from here on out. Apparently, Terry was involved with both of them. He allegedly stole $720 from Ghost, while Pittman simply held a grudge against Terry for who knows whatever reason that had to do with the streets. It's also revealed that in the hours leading up to the shooting, Boosie told Pittman and Ghost that he was willing to pay $25,000 to get Damn. Boyd killed. This was in the wake of a letter Pittman received from an inmate named Lucas. The contents of the letter suggested that Boyd was planning on doing Me something Lou. to Boosie before he was released from the prison. From the looks of it, Boosie knew that Terry was after his life. Maybe it was bad blood, or something even more sinister. We don't know for sure. All we have is that one statement from Marla which states that Terry publicly disrespected Boosie while he was interacting with the fan. Though whatever the reason may be, Boosie was adamant in wanting Boyd dead before he pulled something. Hence Pittman, Ghost, and of course Marlo carried out the assassination. Damn. They spotted him inside his house, Marlo let off the bullets, and then drove all the way to Boosie's home. There, Marlo was then given 2800 for his participation, Boosie probably gave the rest of the money to Ghost and Pittman. Anyway, later when these three were caught and made to testify in court, they confirmed their involvement in the shooting. It was also revealed that Marlo Mike had been involved in four other such shootings prior to this. At least that's what they were able yeah, to find out back the then. Minutes, bro. As for that letter, it stated that Terry was going to jack and slap him. But in Boosie's defense, his attorneys declare that the letter doesn't exist. Boosie has always had a friendly relationship with Terry, and he also had a child with his sister, as I mentioned in the beginning of this video. Though Marlo's tattoos while standing next to Adrian Pittman suggested otherwise. Because of this incident, Marlo ended up getting charged with five more murders, including the death of a rapper nicknamed Nussy, who was killed earlier that year. On February 9, 2009 to be more precise. In May of 2010, Marlo revealed to the authorities that he was told by Ghost that Lil Boosie wanted Nussie dead. But at that point, Ghost was also dead. So there was no way of confirming it with him if Marlo was telling the truth or just making it up. As for mm. when Ghost died in all of this, well, it happened in the beginning of the new year. He was shot and then later died in the hospital. Damn. Still, Marlo was surprisingly thorough in his statements. He revealed that in reply to Nussie's death, Lil Boosie said this, Ghost told me y'all hit that boy. I like that. Lil Boosie's involvement in the murders became exceedingly apparent at that point. While he wasn't charged with Nussie's death, he did get charged with Terry Boyd's death, considering how he allegedly paid Marlo to kill the guy. Well, the reason Lil Boosie was in charge with Nussie's death is because there was no contact between Marlo and him. It was Ghost who told Marlo to do it after all. But he confirmed that Ghost was paid $15,000 by Boosie, out of which Marlo himself received the $2,000. But Boy, this is not that Marlo said. Bro. He declared that the interrogators first threatened to confine his mother and stepfather, and they also claimed that Boosie had put a $25,000 bounty on his head, but the defense attorney later denied these allegations. Marlo Mike eventually got himself arrested, and this happened on May 14, 2010. He was charged with a lot of shootings and deaths that had happened in the prior years. He was on a killing spree for over a year, but since he was just 16, he managed to narrowly avoid the death penalty. The law didn't see him as a kid, though. However, things took an interesting turn during Boosie's trial. Even though Marlo had basically confessed everything and put Lil Boosie out there, when the prosecutor Dana Cummings asked him about it again, he simply said that he never killed Terry Boyd, recanting his prior statements, and declared that, that Mr. Hatch never paid him to kill Terry Boyd. 
The prosecutor called Marlo out on this. She played phone recordings where someone is telling Marlo what to say in the trial. How he only mentioned Hatch, aka Lil Boosie's name, because his parents were being threatened. But now that the prosecutor was playing these recordings, Marlo's words lost all weight. He was literally just following the script. This is where Marlo talks about how the police lied to him. How they said Lil Boosie had placed a $20,000 contract out to get him killed. In the end, Lil Boosie, he made it out. But Marlo didn't. As for Marlo, he was charged with the deaths of Nussie and many other up-and-coming rappers and people that he had been involved with in prior murders. He did not receive the death penalty, but he was given a life sentence. For Lil Boosie, his case ended with just one charge, which was the death of Terry Boyd, which he managed to beat the case on that and then just ended up doing time for the other drug charges that he had. On March 5, 2014, Boosie was once again a free man. He went on to state, Prison is not a place for humans. It's an animal house. Meanwhile, Marlo Mike is still in prison. The judge refused the appeal to change the lifetime prison term by calling Marlo the worst of the worst and rotten to the core. Back in 2013, he wrote Lil Boosie a little letter which said, I miss them good old days. I wish I was still in that world to lay the law down. Was Marlo Mike mentally ill? Does he have any remorse for what he Later did? Later law down, what you mean, bro? Was he bro? even mentally capable of understanding what he did? We may never know. Damn. But that's going to do it for this video, bro. If y'all enjoyed that reaction, make sure y'all like, share, and subscribe. Turn on that post notification bell, and I'm out of here.